So as usual, we're gonna start this tag with a number eight. Um, this is a number eight craft tag. I don't have any of the burlap that Tim used, so I've got my own burlap, and I'm just going to put three sections down because I don't have a piece which is big enough to fit. You'll never know the difference, though, once it's all covered over. So I'm just sticking it all down very heavily with the Ranger Matte Medium, as you can see there. Um, heavy gel would have been better, but the Matte Medium is all I had to hand, so that's what I've used. It works just as well. So now I'm going to give it a blast with the heat tool just to try and set everything in place so that I'm not going to have any peeling corners. And then I'm going to trim off the excess in a few minutes. So there you go, just with a pair of scissors I'm trimming off the excess burlap that I'm not going to need and it still looks as though it's wet on the other side but it actually isn't. Um, that does fade and disappear when it does fully dry. I did use quite a lot of the matte medium. Okay so now I'm using some of the heavy carving embossing paste and this is a Dina Wakely stencil that I'm going to put through. Now I'm going to use the phrase now listen, listen to your inner voice on this as you'll see and then I'm going to give it a blast with the heat gun. Now you're probably wondering why I'm hesitating that because I suddenly realised that with it being wet um, I couldn't really get that close to it so I had to just decide how I was going to space it all out. So just clearing off some of the excess embossing paste there, it will disappear when I start adding the colour to it as you'll see. So again, just adding the last few words to my little quote that, uh, that I want to add on there. Again, embossing paste is one of those things that you've got to be really careful with. Um, if you overheat it, it has a tendency to bubble, which you don't want, uh, but you need to have it dry so that, um, so that you can continue working. So you've got to find that happy balance between giving it a good heat blast and then allowing it to, to dry sort of naturally on its own. So I'm just going to give it a heat over just for a few minutes and then I'm going to allow it to dry for about 10 minutes naturally. You're not going to see that because I will cut that a bit out from the editing. So I'm now adding on my colour onto my words. I'm using the new Mermaid Lagoon Blue which is um, looks a lot more turquoise on here than it actually is but it is a lightish kind of blue as I'm sure you all know. So I'm using a Sukuniko Finger Dauber to add the colour. Now, I did think afterwards that I could have actually added the colour to the embossing paste before I put it on. That way, I wouldn't have got any of the colour on the burlap. Okay, so now I'm using frayed burlap to go around the edges of my frayed burlap. Now just touching up the, uh, the Mermaid Lagoon with the bits that I've rubbed off. With it being water based and on the embossing uh, paste, it doesn't stick 100% until you heat dry it. Once it's dry then it's usually okay. So now I've fished out some of my ephemera pieces from my Tim Holtz ephemera packs. I'm not sure what this one's called because I tend to throw the packaging away. Um, but I've got two or three pieces out and I'm just going to strategically put those onto the tag again using the matte medium but making sure that I'm really buttering the back this time so it sinks into the, the burlap um, and doesn't just peel straight off again.
So you're once again using the matte medium just to go over those ephemera pieces just to seal them because I will be adding some colour around um, the edges and adding some uh, colour to the actual burlap itself and I don't really want to get um, anything too stained on there. So now that's drying, I'm taking my photo booth pictures that I've got here. This is of a, a young couple um, taken in 1953 in Canada at the time when, um, when having affection for another man was illegal and they could have been arrested. So the photo booth was probably one of the only places, a public place, where they could have stolen a kiss without fear of being arrested. So as you can see, I've just gone around tinting the photograph. I've used uh, a light blue and the R14 Copic just to add a little bit of colour. And then I'm just about to bring in the E11. There you go. And that is just going to be a little tint for the flesh tones. These do die back a little bit when, um, when I do start sanding over it and start distressing it. But at least I've added a little bit of tinted colour to the photographs. Just an interesting side note, the photograph was taken in 1953. The chappie on the right, called uh, John, I believe he was called, um, was 28 at the time, which if you work it all back, today in 2015, he would be 90. Born in 1925. So just going over the photographs with the heat tool there, just to seal them in. I've actually printed the picture onto photographic paper, which is why it's a bit shiny and glossy, which is why I use the alcohol pens and not water-based pens like Tim did. So just using the Archival Link potting soil there with blending tool just to go around the edges. And here is where I just distress it a little bit with a sanding block just to give it that aged look. So taking some of the Tim Holt rub-ons, I'm going to just apply one or two in strategic places here and there, just to give it that uh, vintage kind of ephemera look. Now you'll have to forgive the filming at this point because I wanted to do a little bit of close-up work so I zoomed quite in but I kept forgetting to zoom back out again so sometimes I do go off uh, off camera a little bit um, but I do pull it back again when I remember. It's not usually for very long. So just adding that clock element onto the bottom left hand corner as you can see just in the corner there uh, I did forget that I was off camera, so um, but I do pull it back in again in a few seconds. So just using one of the metal embellishments here, I didn't think the text or the writing on it was dark enough, so I've just gone over filling in those gaps again with a little bit of black gesso. That was the black gesso from Indigo Blue. And now I'm going to bring in some alcohol ink, which is the red pepper. And I'm just going to go over the tag with a tag slider with the, uh, the red pepper alcohol ink. Alcohol ink is great for adding to metallic um, embellishments because Again, you can wipe it off again to give it a really good distress look. Now I'm adding some gold to it now. Um, although it was silver originally, it's now going to turn into red and gold. So 
So now taking a piece of white seam binding and just using up the rest of that red alcohol ink that I had on the, um, the blending tool, I'm just going to stain the ribbon that I'm going to thread through my tie, uh, slider tag. Give it a quick heat blast just to set the alcohol. And I'm just adding some of the gold to it and then heating that too just to get it dry very quickly so I can then start threading it through. I am going to tie this ribbon around the width of the tag, I'm just moving out again now. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to stick on my photo booth pictures with some of the matte medium. And again, I'm really going to butter the back, make sure that there's plenty of the matte medium on there. because I do want it to grip into the burlap texture and hold fast. So I'm now adding the tag on and threading the ribbon around the back and then just tying it into a decorative knot. I'll do it twice just to make sure it isn't going to move. Now the thing with those sliders is, is that you can position it if it's not quite in the right place. You can just move it across, which I will do in a second. That's it, just move it with my thumb and then it all starts to tie together. So again with the alcohol inks, this time I'm using watermelon which is another red and pool. I'm just going to add some blotches of colour to those areas that haven't got anything on them at the moment. I'm going to set that aside to dry for a moment, give it a bit of a heat blast possibly, and then I'm going to add in some of my chit chats. Uh, I've just chosen three of the words to make up the sentence, your timeless memories. And then I'm going to put that to one side and start working on the rest of my embellishments. Now again, using the watermelon, I've got a little metal embellishment that I'm just adding some of that alcohol ink to. and then adding some of the pool to the wings. And unfortunately it did actually travel across the top of the, the heart. So I had to go back in and add some more color. Um, once it was dry, and it does get very, very hot, um, you'll probably see it fly out of my fingers in a moment because it's that hot, there you go. So I had to bring it back in and hold it with the, uh, the, the, the stick, the wooden stick. So I'm just sanding some of that colour back again and then adding the red to it just to make it a bit more vibrant. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of a heat blast just to set it in place before I add it to the chain and loop catch to make it a little dangler. I also added the key on the back of that as well. So now that's all set and ready, I've got a piece of red seam binding this time. I'd forgotten I had some of it. And then I'm just going to tie a knot in it and then hook the, the dangler around through the loops before I tighten them. There you go. And then I'm just going to add another knot in just to make sure that it won't come loose. So I was just about ready to, to say we're all finished and then decided to add some more rub-ons. That was the piece that I had left over from the bottom left hand corner of the photograph. So I thought rather than throw it away, I'll add it up there. So I then thought I would add some other elements from the rub-on sheet as well. So with these last two remnant rub-ons, that is it. I think enough is enough. There's enough going on that tag to last for ages. So I hope you enjoyed that and you'll join me again real soon 
for my next start to finish video.